I am Bob Warnick, and um, I've lived in this area for over 30 years. Moved here in 1975, and uh, first met the uh, Hess family uh, when when they moved here uh, shortly after that. Um, I uh, knew Kyle uh, from the time that they moved into the area. I believe it was the Lake Forest Ward that we were all uh, in at the time. Uh, I was serving as a uh, counselor to uh, Bishop Bill Berger and uh, Blaine Lindahl was the other counselor. And uh, Kyle, uh, had, and, and I can't for sure remember what his calling at the time was. He was young men's president or ward mission leader or something like that, but we met together often. Uh, and what strikes me uh, to this day is his optimism, his enthusiasm, his personality was so uh, positive about, about everything. The youth loved him. He was one of the greatest missionaries uh, that I've ever met. Uh, he was bold and yet not uh, uh, overbearing. And uh, he was just a real person. One of the, um, my favorite memories of Kyle was when either before a meeting when we were waiting or sometimes late at night after a meeting, we would sit in the clerk's office uh, at the Los Alisos building outside of Bishop Berger's office and we'd sit and talk. And we would talk about politics. We would talk about business. We would talk about missionary work. We would talk about our families, we would talk about, I mean, you name it. And we would sit there sometimes for an hour or more uh, on many, many occasions and talk. And I, and, and Kyle was a few years older than I was. And I always looked to him as a mentor that this is somebody that I would like to be like. And so I don't know if he recognized it as that, but I would ask him questions. What would you do about this? You know, well, and, and like dealing with the youth, because he was so good at dealing with the youth. How would you handle this? And you know, what would you do about this you know, in your family? And, uh, and so I would, I would kind of grill him a little bit and ask him for, uh, for help and advice. And uh, he was always willing to sit and talk to me forever. As I've mentioned, I've had experiences with him uh, in business because uh, he had, I'm a CPA, and he asked me to uh, help him with some financial matters and with his taxes. Uh, and I remember having several meetings with him, in fact, going to his uh, place of business and how enthusiastic he was about his insulation businesses, business and showing me the trucks and how they stacked all the insulation uh, in the trucks and then talking about uh, tax planning. And, and his concern was never how do I how do I pay the least taxes? His concern was always, how am I always, always honest in my dealings with my fellow men? Make sure that, that I do what I'm supposed to do by the law. I don't want to do anything that is not absolutely honest in any of my dealings with my fellow men, including the Internal Revenue Service. And I was always very impressed by that. After Kyle passed away, uh, then I had the opportunity to be able to help Karen with the financial matters uh, that presented themselves upon his death and, uh, and how she was going to make it. And uh, she was always uh, very confident that I can do it. I can make it and uh, you know, I'll continue teaching piano lessons to supplement uh, my income and uh, I'll be able to make it. And to this day I still uh, help her with her taxes and take care of that for her and uh, that's been a real honor. Um, I know people who, in similar circumstances, uh, have made very unwise financial decisions. And uh, Karen uh, has always been very practical and very um, level-headed when it came to finances and very conservative. And, uh, and so knowing her as I did and, and knowing Kyle's personality as, as it was, um, I had confidence that she could make it, where uh, many could not have made it on what she made it on. Uh, 
actually the um, many of the events around uh, Kyle's death uh, remain fairly vivid with me. I remember that it was youth conference. It was Catalina. It was held in the spring of uh, 1979, um, and um, and I wasn't able to go. And uh, I had been to that one, same youth conference before. I loved it. It was a, it was really fun, and I was very disappointed that I was not able to go. I was serving on the high council at the time. Uh, he was uh, serving the bishopric with um, uh, Bishop Berger of Mission Lake Ward, I, th I think, at the time, and. Um, uh, they had left and gone on the uh, youth conference, and I had forgotten about it until I got a phone call uh, and was told that Kyle Hess had drowned. Um, it sat me back, uh, and I was, you know, I think like most people, you say, "No, that can't be. That, that can't be true." And uh, but of course, it was true, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was a shock. And it was, um, I mean, the first thoughts you go to were to Karen and to the kids, and uh, that Kyle is gone. As I mentioned before, less than a year earlier, my brother, who was 40 years old, passed away suddenly and left five children. And uh, so I'd kind of gone through it with a close relative shortly before. And uh, doesn't make it any easier. Um, but I think like everybody, I had, I had no concern for Kyle. I mean, it's one of those situations that you know he's doing great. And, uh, and you, you know that, you know, had he had the choice, he would have stayed. But we don't always have that choice. And um, for whatever reason, um, he went on. And, uh, and I, I believe, though, that his, uh, his testimony will live on in the lives of his family for uh, forever. I had a uh, very spiritual experience um, following Kyle's death uh, and attending the uh, funeral and prior to the funeral, the uh, viewing. Uh, I had always been uh, very hesitant uh, uh, when it came to death. And uh, in fact, I had a brother pass away a year before, and it was uh, of a concern to me to, to be around a body. And um, I. Uh, but I love Kyle so much, I wanted to go to the viewing. I went to the viewing and a little hesitatingly kind of walked up to the uh, casket. And Kyle's father uh, grabbed a hold of me. And uh, we talked for a couple of minutes. And he said, come on up here. And he brought me right up to uh, Kyle's body. And, uh, and he just wanted me to, to, to touch him and, to, and just to be close to him. And, uh, and I can tell you from that moment on, I have never again had a concern uh, in my life about being around a body. Uh, it became crystal clear to me that uh, Kyle was alive. He was doing just fine. And he was busy doing whatever he's doing. And this was just the earthly remains. And uh, it, was, it was a powerful spiritual experience for me that I've never forgotten. When Kyle passed away, uh, my recollection of the whole ward was uh, one of support. Uh, I don't know of anybody, anyway, that, uh, who I thought that it shook their faith. Um, but, uh, but I think the, the ward rose up to, uh, to be there and to help. And, um, uh, and I think anybody who came to the memorial service. Uh, it was one of the, there may even be a recording of it. I, I, I've never heard a recording of it, but maybe there was. It was one of the most uh, greatest missionary meetings I've ever been to in my life. If you, if you were an investigator of the church and you went to that, you probably would have joined the church. It was, uh, but, but again, it, it's as though Kyle wrote it. I mean, it's what he would have, I really believe it's what he would have said, uh, being the great missionary that he was. You always wonder that. You may have been dizzy. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Yep, I always, I always wondered that myself, you know. Do you watch or 
you, you may be so busy uh, that it's like, <laughs> didn't have time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Kyle was unique. And I think people remember Kyle because if you go through all the people you meet in your life, and, I, and you know, we're doing this interview, but I don't, want to, I don't want you to think that I'm saying this because we're doing this interview. This is absolutely the way I've always felt about this. As I look at all the people I've known in my life, I've never met another person like Kyle Hess. Um, his, his power of his personality and of his spirit was unique among all the people I've ever known. Uh, his optimism and, and enthusiasm and positive attitude. I never heard him say neg anything negative about anybody else. I never heard him say anything negative about business, about anything. He was just one of those people that was optimistic and positive about everything. And everything was good. Everything was an opportunity. Everything was uh, going to turn out well uh, for Kyle. And he always had that that attitude. I serve now in the uh, Carlsbad Mission Presidency, so I get a chance to train missionaries. And, and I've done that for over three years now. And on many occasions, as I have trained missionaries, I have brought up Kyle Hess and used him as an example of what a great missionary would be like and should be like. Yeah, I've known Karen obviously the whole time that uh, she's lived in this area uh, and have seen her go through obviously the most uh, traumatic thing that psychologists say can happen to us, the loss of a spouse. And, um, and she has had tremendous strength. Uh, she has had the uh, power to uh, raise her family. Um, as far as I know, she never had uh, any intent to remarry, um, though I never specifically asked that question, but that was the impression that I had, and that, and that she was going to do this on her own. And uh, though uh, she had lots of friends and lots of people to help and all, but still, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's Karen that has, uh, that has done all that and had the strength. And I think a lot of that is uh, the strength that, that was gained the two of them together. Uh, and uh, Karen's one of the sweetest, um, humblest, most humble um, people that I know, most caring, most giving. She loves her children. Um, and she's uh, watched them grow and uh, uh, make mistakes and never changes her attitude about them. Uh, her love for them uh, is, is th that I've ever seen is ever, has never wavered, uh, no matter what they have gone through and she's always there to help them.